Hey guys, welcome back to On The Spot STEM. And today, as per fan request, we will be tackling 2010 Amy 2, problem number 9. And the problem reads, let A, B, C, D, E, F be a regular hexagon, and let G, H, I, J, K, and L be the midpoints of sides A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, and A, F respectively. The segments A, H, B, I, C, J, D, K, E, L, and F, G bound a smaller regular hexagon. Let the ratio of the area of the smaller hexagon to the area of A, B, C, D, E, F be represented as a common fraction M over N, where M and N are relatively prime positive integers. Find M plus N. We can employ coordinate geometry to simplify this problem a lot. We just need to find where points alpha and beta lie, because once we find the distance between them, we know the length of the side of the smaller regular hexagon. And for this, we don't need to find the coordinates of all the points on the hexagon. We just have to find it for J, C, D, E, K, F, and L. Because once I can find the equation for L, E, and K, D, I can find alpha. And once I can find the equations for K, D, and J, C, I can find beta. Now we can start assigning coordinates. Without loss of generality, assume that the side length of A, B, C, D, E, F has value 2, which means if E is at the origin, D is at 2, 0, and since J is the midpoint, it's at 1, 0. And if I draw a normal line next to D, I see this forms a 60 degree angle, which means the X value, the base of the triangle, is going to have value 2 times cosine 60 degrees, which is 1, and the height will be 2 times sine of 60 degrees, which is root 3 which is why c will have the coordinates 3 comma root 3. And likewise, I can do the same thing on the other side of the hexagon and see that f will have a side length value of negative 1 comma root 3, which means that since k is the midpoint, k will have a value which is the average from f to e as negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. For the coordinates of a, we could either notice that it's going to be the same thing as from e to f except we flip it so that the x is now plus 1 or we could use law of cosines to notice that a e will have a value of 2 root 3 so a has coordinates 0 comma 2 root 3 which means l which is the midpoint will have coordinates negative 1 half comma 3 root 3 over 2. Now the algebra comes into play we need to find the equations of the three lines e l k d and j c because the intersection of EL and KD yields alpha, and the intersection of KD and JC yields beta. Notice that the equation for the line EL is y is equal to negative 3 root 3 times x. And for KD, similarly, y equals negative root 3 over 5 times x plus 2 root 3 over 5. And for JC, y equals root 3 over 2 times x minus root 3 over 2. This is very straightforward algebra we use to find the equation of a line between two points. And for simplicity, so we can refer to this later, label line EL as 1, KD as 2, and JC as 3. We can easily see that point alpha will be the intersection of line 1 and line 2 and point beta will be the intersection of line 2 and line 3. From here, it's just straightforward algebra to find the exact coordinates. Let's first find alpha. It's the intersection of line 1 and 2. By substitution, I can set up the equation that negative 3 root 3x equals negative root 3 over 5x plus 2 root 3 over 5. And by solving this simple one, one variable equation, I get x equals negative 1 over 7. And plugging this back into equation number 1, I have that the y coordinate is 3 root 3 over 7. We can do the same process to find beta, which is the intersection of lines 2 and 3. Instead of just directly setting up the equation, I know that the root 3s will cancel, so I can directly go to the proportion, saying 2 minus x over 5 equals x minus 1 over 2, which gives us that x equals 9 over 7, which means that y equals root 3 over 7. Notice that the problem statement asks for the ratio of the area between the smaller hexagon and the larger hexagon. This is really fundamental, 
because the ratio of their areas will be proportional to the ratio of their side lengths squared. Even though the area of a hexagon is 3s squared root 3 over 2, we don't have to worry about the 3 root 3 over 2 constant since it's going to cancel anyways. Therefore, we just need to find the ratio of the side lengths squared of both hexagons. Hang on tight, because we're almost done. The small blue s squared is the side length of the smaller hexagon squared, and we can find the side length by the distance formula. For the x, the distance is 9 over 7 minus negative 1 over 7, which is the same thing as adding the coordinates squared, plus quantity root 3 over 7 minus 3 root 3 over 7 quantity squared. The reason we don't have to take the square root in this case for the distance formula is because we want the ratio of the areas, and so we want to find s squared. Remember, s is the same thing as distance in this case, so we don't need to square root it since we want the square value anyways. And likewise, the silent of the big black hexagon in this case is 2, so on the denominator we write 2 squared. And now we compute. The numerator evaluates to 112 over 49, and the denominator evaluates to 4. And when we simplify this expression, we are left with 4 over 7. What a small fraction, which makes the answer 4 plus 7 equals 11, which is also a very small answer considering that for Amy questions, we'd expect a larger answer. But nevertheless, the answer is 11, and thus we've solved the problem. If you enjoy the video, leave a like and comment down below. If you're new to our channel, subscribe. And if you'd like to see any other problems, please comment down below, and we'll try to get to them as soon as we can.